Hello, this is Matthew Mitchell, and this is going to be kind of a very tweaky, superficial tutorial on Photomagico because you have some other tutorials you use that go into more depth and more nuance. But I just want to give you a very brief idea of why I find slideshow software so useful. And, and since I'm on the Mac, I'm using the best slideshow software on the Mac, which is called Photomagico. I think you can get it for about $90 um, as an academic price. On Windows, there are many good options. Well, there are many options, like there are many options on the Mac, but you know some are much better than others. I think, as far as my understanding is, that is that Pro Show Gold is the best choice on Windows. Uh, but the last time I really did in-depth research into that on Windows was about 18 months ago. So there might be something just as good now. So let me open up. Um, one thing I wanted to show you. So this is my Paris movie I made. Uh, I think I showed people in class and outside of class this presentation. It's, I think, about 11 or 12 minutes long. Okay, so let's open it up. Here we are in Photomagico. Let me get rid of my dock. Let's make, okay. So now I'm maximizing the space. And what I'm going to do is go all the way to the beginning. Okay. And... Sorry, I'm going to do some cleanup here, organizational cleanup. Okay, so now what I want you to look at is this timeline on the bottom, because the top right now is very boring. And notice that it tells you there's 140 slides total, and it's 11 minutes and 42 seconds. So 140, you know, if you're doing two or three or four slides, you could use screencasting software for that. It's going to be just about as easy. You may not be able to do as much. But once you have many more images and you're doing more complex things, and some of those complex things you'll see in other tutorials, uh, you want good ways to organize it. Otherwise, it becomes really, frankly, overwhelming. So you can see that I have organized a slideshow into essentially chapters. So there's fashion, neighborhood, mathematics, all the way to Charlie. And, and so I can fold or unfold those things as I want. So I'm gonna unfold this and here's all my fashion shots. So if I, you know, if I click on one, there it is, it shows up there. So when you're doing something big or longer, it just allows your mind not to get overwhelmed with a whole long stream of images. And that can certainly happen. Even if you're making something five minutes or six minutes long that's complicated, uh, you can get overwhelmed. Now, there are a variety of ways to add audio, and it, the audio could be spoken word, the audio could be music, um, one of the ways is to create your audio in such a way that it, it runs across the whole thing. What I, and I often do that myself, what I did in this particular one is essentially because I wanted silence between the different chapters, and sometimes that silence was only, I don't know, three seconds long, sometimes it was longer, sometimes it was shorter, uh, but I wanted to be able to change how much silence what there was between chapters uh, later, then what I've done is, notice I've added audio to each chapter. So I'm not going to show you how to do that, but each chapter has audio, or you could have chapter uh, audio for the whole thing. So there's a lot you can do with, with audio. And notice, by the way, that my current image is, you can see where it is. Even though things are folded up, you can see that little blue there. Okay, so now if we look at the current image, let's look over the side and let's just look above, well, first of all, let's go back. So I'm in the storyboard view down here. Now that's what I use most of the time, but there are some things that you can do in slideshow software where it's much better to use the timeline view. This is relatively unique to Photomagico. Not all slideshow software offers that. And you can see in mine that uh, you, you can see the length of each thing, which is useful, gives you a different view. Now you can see that all the images have equal spacing. If they didn't, they would look different. You can see at the beginning, it has slightly different spacing. At the end, it has slightly different spacing. So, um, and you can see where there's no particular image. When there's no particular image, or it, it, what they call a blank slide, matter of fact, you see there's a little icon there for blank slide, it just looks black on your screen, which is exactly what I want it. Okay. So, so there's a bunch of helpful tools at the top, and one of those helpful tools is to change views. One's to add a blank slide. One's to add a title, which people often want to do. I did not do that. So for example, this image here, I created in a graphic design program, and then I, I brought it in just as a regular image. But you could, let's go back to fashion. 
let's go to this. And I could choose to add a title, right? And I'm going to go Jean-Paul Gautier, if I'm spelling this right, uh, exhibit. And then I could select this whole thing. And if I went uh, to various options, look at, in this case, look at options on the right hand side. You know, I can have this left center aligned. Um, I can make this bigger. Um, I can make it different color text. I can make it a different font. Let's make it giddy up standard, right? There we go. Um, I can change the background. Okay, so what we have is, and then I can move that wherever I want. So now the slide has that, right? And it's only on this particular slide. Notice what happens down in the timeline. It shows me that I have now something that you're learning a lot about, layers. I have layers. So if I put this below this, it would not show. I, I don't think there's any opacity settings. Let's just see if I can do it. Actually, I may not be able to even do that. Let's see if I can do that. See, now you don't see it. So this is because of how layers work. So you can add layers, you can add various text. Um, you can have an image. So for example, I could have this and I could have it be, right, two and a quarter seconds long. Uh, sorry, I'm doing this wrong. I don't know if I can change just this. So I may not, I, this is something I don't, uh, play around with very much, it looks like I may not be able to change that. It has to last the whole time. So if I wanted this image to show for a while and then this to come on, I essentially have to duplicate it, um, which is easy enough to do. Okay. So there's a bunch of options here. There's options for these things called snippets, which are really little helpful things that you can add in, uh, you know, like direct it by right? Um, there's images that I can add in. And by default, I usually, br I drag in additional folders for when I'm working on things, but by default, it will give you access to certain images on your computer. Okay. So I'm going to stop with photos and, um, you know, here's a bunch of photographs that I may or may, here, let's put this in. There we go. Right, there we go. That's something that I don't think has been cropped or done anything with, so there we go. Um, notice, by the way, when I come here, see how this image takes up 100% of the space? That's because I already worked on them. So they're exactly 1920 by 1080, which is nice. I'm just dragging, dragging in a raw image and I've, I've done nothing with it. So notice what it says, the zoom is 24%. So the actual image is a lot larger um, as long as I don't go over 100%, I can do really interesting things. So let's take this up. See, I can really change this. And, right. So I'm not over 100%. And now let's look at fashion. Now, notice there's going to be no audio with that particular section. Okay. <laughs> There we go. And now we go into the regular thing with audio. Let me just stop this. <laughs> Let me stop this. Now what's happened in this one that's not true for the other ones because of how I set it up is if we go to, that's images, then you can add movies, uh, then you can add audio or, or you can drag it in. All these things you can drag in additional stuff. But notice on this one, animation is enabled. Um, and, and then there's transitions and there's these layers and you can do other things. So, so for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to enable it. And then if we do it, it's going to just stay there. So here we go at the beginning and now it's not going to move. And now we, right, there we go. So one could choose to do that. If I go here, uh, notice over here, there is some layer options. And I don't know exactly how this works. Oh, don't want to do that. Right. So let's just see how this works. Okay. So what happened is 
for this under layers, it only lasted a little bit. I can make, right. Um, okay, so let's see this again. So it just, it just goes out. It would be nice if there was some sort of fade for just that layer. And there probably is a way to do it. I am just not seeing it. It may be, ah, here we go. So when I turn on animations enabled, is, then, and then uh, let's see what happens here. Right, so then you can start to play around with a bunch of things. So mainly why I want to show you this is just um, uh, to see when you have a large number of images, it's easy to organize and some basic things. So let me close this. I'm not gonna save it. Okay, so uh, here's something I did in class, which is I took an image from every body and I dragged it in. Now notice what I did in this case is all these ended up being 6.3 seconds and you can rightly go, how did I know to make it 6.3 seconds? I didn't. So what I did is I put in all the images in a default order and I think what the application remembered was the last time what was the settings I used. So the last time I used five seconds or four seconds. So it made all these five or four seconds long. Okay. And then I have none of them, you know, I have animation disabled, blah, 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 blah. Then I added this audio, and then I said match durations to audio. Okay, so, um, uh, so there's a way of putting in the audio, and if it's longer or shorter than all these images, it will get matched, automatically matched. Otherwise, I don't know how to come up with the 6.3. That would take a lot of work. So that's easy to do. Um, what I have students do in some classes are create these things called Pecha Kuchas. So I'm going to bring up an example of one. Now, what a Pecha Kucha is, in this case, th these were hand-drawn, is a presentation that's 20 images. Each one lasts 20 seconds, and people do a presentation on it. Well, when you're doing that in the class and you have a lot of students giving you stuff, you know, it can take a long time to put it together. But it's easy with slideshow software because notice... I preset this. The first one I had to develop in class, I had to say 20 seconds for each thing, blah, 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 blah. And then it would go on. Let's just see if I, there we go. It, I just had to select it all, give it 20 seconds, and then the next time I started something, it would remember that default of 20 seconds. And then all I had to do was, um, since I recorded the audio live, I just brought in their audio. I didn't try to match it up or anything. I just brought it in and there we are. It it worked perfectly. And you can see these are a bunch of hand-drawn images, right, that all fit. So it, what that does is it to create each one of these Pecha Kuchas, students had to give me their images uh, or we had to scan them and then uh, there, there's the recorded audio but once we had the raw ingredients actually creating each Pecha Kucha took less than three minutes. Bam! Very efficient, very fast. So those are a, a brief introduction to a few ways in which I've used slideshow software, wedding photographers and other people use it in much more sophisticated ways. But what's useful is you can use a lot of images uh, you can uh, do a lot of things with it, and you can do a lot of things with it in a very time-effective manner once you've learned how to use the software. That's the big caveat. And like anything, you want your, your raw ingredients to be in good shape. So you want your raw ingredients, i.e. your photographs, for you to have done whatever you want to do with them beforehand. You can bring in Photoshop documents, you can bring in JPEGs, you can bring in pings, it just doesn't matter. Um, but you want to, you know, have cropped, resized them, done whatever tweaks you want in terms of making the color better, all of that first. And if you're bringing in audio, you want that raw ingredient to be done well beforehand. Now, if it's, if it's audio that somebody else has created, they've already done that for you. But if it's something that you have created, you want to make sure the audio has all the tweaks, the editing, the blah, 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 before you bring it in. I hope this helps a bit. Take care.